But I just, in the back of my head, I was like, it's going to be dry. I just think it's going to be dry. But it was juicy. It was very juicy. Demi comes for cats. For me, this is probably the, 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 the juiciest part of all of it. Sabrina and Steven, yeah. I just thought, what the F? Sabrina seems ready. So, you know, Emma's like, you know, what happened? And, and, and Sabrina's basically like, well, let me tell you what happened, yeah. So basically, two days, two days, to quote my girl from um, Love Island, two days! <laughs> Bobby and Jasmine, and it's such a contrast. Like, they're so happy. And Nicole's like, look, look, in the day, it was hurtful, what you said. And he's like, you know, yeah, I'm really sorry for that. So it wasn't even true. But it's not, it's not her fault. She didn't make him cheat, whether it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, like whatever. <sighs> yeah, there's nothing, I'm just, I'm just not about it. What going on, going on, people, dems? So this is episode 12 of Love is Blind UK. And listen, yeah, I was, after watching the last episodes, I was a bit like, right, okay, it'd be interesting to see what happens now. But I just, in the back of my head, I was like, it's gonna be dry. I just think it's gonna be dry, but it was juicy. It was very juicy. It was very juicy, just to go straight into it. So there are some couples as they walk in that are sitting together, some that are not sitting together. So the first ones that stood out to me were Nicole and Benaya. Bobby and Jasmine, they're, they're, they're like together, they're like hand in hand, they look really happy. And obviously Ollie and Demi are sat on opposite sides. Freddie and Kat are sat on, sat on opposite sides. But also Sabrina and Steven are sat on opposite sides as well, which I was just like, well, hang on a minute. Uh? Oh, and obviously Maria, Maria and Tom as well. But obviously Sam and Steven, they got married. So I was like, what? Out of everybody, you guys were like the most set, the most, the the ones that I absolutely had no doubts were going to get married. So I was like, what on earth has happened there? So this is like a year later. So I didn't realise this is how long this show had been uh, being filmed and stuff for. So it's a year later. Um, it goes to, so Emma and Matt go to Demi and Ali first. And they're like, so what happened? Because obviously you said it was enough for right now. When you said no at the altar, what what's happened? And Demi just says, look, you know, Ali is a great guy, um, but realistically, he just wasn't her guy. Demi feels like she has really evolved from where she was when she first started the show, and that she's she's kind of. She's now Demi 2.0. She's back to... She's like, you know, she, she found it really difficult to watch some of those episodes and she didn't really recognise herself. And she's kind of needed to really do the work and really do what she needed to do to kind of really get back to herself. So she's actually moved back in with her parents and she's just doing her. She's just doing her for now. Ali... Again, he seems at peace. He th he feels like it was the right thing to do. I put here that Emma and Matt were really good in terms of how they asked the questions and stuff and how they were kind of eliciting some of the responses from them both because it did seem like it was a real mature way to to deal with things. It didn't seem like it was a... a they, didn't, they didn't seem aggy with each other at all. Um, it seemed to really respect each other's decision. And they, they were like, look, you know, Demi was really, really, really happy about a lot of the support that she'd had from people. And she actually was crying happy tears, but she had a lot of support and encouragement from people and she was just really grateful for that. Then Emma, or Matt, asks Ali about the other person that Ali was interested in and the other person he had a connection with, who was Kat. And they're like, you know, did you, did you realise that Kat, that, did you realise, sorry, that Demi had such a, a strong connection with, with Ali? And Kat was like, look, you know, I, was very much a yabba yabba yabba, like this is who I like and da da da. Whereas Demi really kept her cards to her chest, which maybe was a was a clever thing to do. And then I've put here, Demi comes for Kat. She's like, look, you know, I liked you, we were friends. And I, it, it left a bad taste in my mouth that when people were asking you about or you were talking about me and Ollie, that you felt that we wouldn't be compatible. 
bearing in mind you've never seen Ali, you've never physically met him. So what is it that you feel would be immediately incompatible about about me and him? She's like, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't have spoken about you in that way. If anything, you need to focus on your connection, don't worry about mine. And she was like, just hang on a minute. She's like, I wasn't talking about anything like that. Like I was just saying that I just felt that you know, from the conversations that we'd had, that I didn't think that you, you you guys fit as well. And then Jasmine was like, "Yeah, but hang on a minute, like you you don't what do you know? Like it, you know, you you're you're judging it on some kind of physical compatibility, even though you've never seen her. You're judging it on what she looked like, and you could see that she was really upset. Like Kat was like kind of crying, and she's just like, I I didn't. That's not what it really wasn't meant in that way. Like I just really cared for Demi, and um, I'm and I get my words wrong." I probably said it in the wrong way. She's like, but that's not what I meant at all. And I, what I have put here, she started bars. <laughs> um, but she she really said that you know, she didn't really mean that way. And Demi was like, look, I'm not looking to be for no one. Like, in the day, we're all humans. We've all gone through this experiment and been vulnerable. You know, I just needed to get that off my chest and let you know that that left a bad taste in my mouth. But, you know, you've apologised, so cool. Then Emma's like, you know, you did say to Ali, she's like, you did say that Charlotte that was in the show was fire so it hasn't been anything that's gone on with you two and I think it's almost like I can't get his words out he's like you know yeah we kind of you know and uh, you know and we kind of you know oh, I don't know how to coin it but you know and basically Charlotte's like look you know I don't know what I would have done without him uh, in, the, in the past few weeks, having you know, had to watch all of this. And she's like, you know, I don't know where I would have been without him being there through through all the stuff that she's been through, what, they, what they've been through. I know, what is it that she, I mean, her part in this was, very, unless I've missed something, but aside from her walking down the stairs and him being like, yo, she's fire, I can't really understand what it is that she's been through. So has there been something like in her personal life that she's saying that she's been through and he's been a rock to her? Or is there something within the show that she's been subject to? And he's... I, I just didn't understand that. I've actually put... Well, what, have, what, what have they been through? I don't know. And, and then a shout out to Demi's parents. Then it... Now, for me, this is probably the, 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 the juiciest part of all of it. Sabrina and Stephen, yeah. I've just put, what the F? Sabrina seems ready. So, you know, Emma's like, you know, what happened? And, and, and Sabrina's basically like, well... Let me tell you what happened, yeah. So basically, when I said in the in the show that like I was really open to like quitting my job and you know starting a new agency and stuff, Stephen was really supportive of that. But actually, there was just no support that materialised when we actually got married, and actually there was just, he just didn't support me in that way. We ended up having to be long distance, which we obviously didn't plan for. But actually, where I, I made loads of effort, he didn't make any effort at all. You know, she was talking about when he did come over, like, you know, she really made an effort for him to be there. Whereas, like, he didn't make any such effort for her. You know, she was recounting the fact that she bought him an iron board. The fact that she bought £70 worth of groceries. The fact that she don't drink tea or coffee, but she bought the tea and the coffee for Stephen. And he couldn't even be bothered to do nothing for her. So the communication just fell off. Bearing in mind that, like, one of the things that they were very much like, you know, I appreciate you, remember? They, they were like, you know, I appreciate you, the communication, the way that we communicate. Like, apparently he, she made seven trips. Because, like, well, how many trips did you make from Belfast to London? She's like, seven. So she had that number ready. And then they asked him the same question. And he was like, you know, two. And he's like, and I hold my hands up to that. You know, um, I, I, I did drop the ball in that regard. And... I put here that, yeah, she's come through with the receipts. If only he did nothing. She felt that she, there was no respect for her. There was no consideration for, for, for her, her family. Um, he texted her two days before Christmas to be like, yeah, I ain't coming. And when she was just like, you know, but my family have gone to effort and stuff. And he was basically like, shit happens. They'll get over it. You know, and he was like, you know, the way you're portraying certain things in this, yeah, it, it, that, that's just not the way. He's like, you know, I could sit down here and I could, you know, air you out as well, but out of respect for you, I wouldn't do that. But to be honest, I don't even recognise who this person is right now because some of this is just lies. Some of this is actual lies. And she's like, I'm not lying. He's like, well, you know, enlighten me. Enlighten me what I'm lying about, you know. And 
he was saying, look, at the end of the day, he's like, you know, I was going through, like I had, I'm guessing it was something, something difficult had happened family-wise or something like that. But he was like, you know, having given up his job to be on this show, he lost all of his clients, which means that finances were, were not in the, in the best position. And it also meant that, you know, he... He was like, look, we were in a position where we didn't have to worry about anything like that because we were in the show, we were on holiday, things were getting paid for, like, we didn't have to, we, you know, the, the real world hadn't really started. So, you know, imagine that the real life did happen and then you've got this distance and it's like, you know, your walls can go up pretty, pretty high. He's like, so it, it's already quite hard and then having that distance in, in the way as well it just meant it was even harder. And he's like, you know, I'm not shying away from my part to play in this. He's like, but there's a lot of lies that you're telling there as well. And in the end, it got to the point where Emma had to stop, to step in and be like, let's just stop it there. Can we just leave it there? Because Sabrina was, re like, they were re ready to continue. And all I kept saying, because I watched it with my mum, and all I kept saying was like, the way that his, her mum, had grilled him because she was the one that got one of the biggest grillings out of everybody. I can just imagine how vexed she was. I can just imagine because if she if he was coming to hers for Christmas and she's gone out of her way to cook extra food and this and the other and two days, two days to quote my girl from um, Love Island. Two days! <laughs> how are you going to, how are you going to do that? And maybe he just wasn't in. And he's like, and he did say, he's like, look, I'm not Mr. Perfect, you know. I know where my misgivings are, and and actually, you know, I'm not Mr. Positive all the time. But you do the best that you can when you're dating and stuff, and you put the best outside, basically. So I kind of got the 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 vibe I was getting from that was very much like he was doing all the stuff in the courtship phase, but then when it actually got to the real phase, CBA, and. I'm not one to take sides because ultimately, you know, neither one of none of us here watching from our little sidelines would possibly know Wagwan because we were never in it. But I kind of feel like, I mean, she came with the receipts, fam. For her to be like, you know, this how much the groceries were cut that cost you, and this how much the board, the iron board. I mean, to bring that up on national TV to be like, yo, I bought you an iron board. What did you do for me? Like she came ready to, to and even and, and as soon as she asked the question, she was like, he did nothing. He didn't show up. And she was like, you know what? Why did you even say yes? Why did you even say yes? Because the vows you gave me, you didn't get one of them. But he was like, well, like I said, the same for you. Like I said, the same for you. Actually, he's like, but I'm not. I'm not doing that. I don't know, man. It seems. I mean, even when they were talking about like watching it back and stuff, and they were like, you know, there's so much love in those pods. And, you know, he was like, I've cried watching it. And she's like, I find it really difficult to watch. And, and be like, that's the guy that I fell in love with. And I don't know where he went. And I think there's a lot of pain there. There's a lot of, you know, potential that, which we all have when relationships don't work, right? When we've all got that whole, what could have been, the, what we thought was going to happen. And then it doesn't. And it's like, it's, it's grief. You're actually grieving the, the life that you thought you're going to have. I don't know. I just said, I feel like there's, the, there's there's probably a little bit of truth in what they're both saying, really. And the fact that he didn't, I mean, you can't even, I mean, if you've not got the finances to get over somewhere, I don't know how he could have made that any different because you can't afford to go, you can't afford to go. Um, but there are other ways that you can show up where if the money, because, you know, money can be earned. Like, at the end of the day, you both shared very, like, you know, you stood in front of your friends and told them just how much that you were ready for. I think this is the thing that I don't get, right? Because you, you're going to have your friends and family come and do a wedding, dress up, sit down, eat food, meet people, fraternise, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you're going to have all those people that are sceptical about it and you're... And you're going to reassure them and almost shoot them down to only then not be bothered to make any effort once you've actually done it. And I think that's the thing for me that goes, well, hang on, how how genuine could you've been in the first place? And because had she said, OK, he didn't have any money to do X, Y and Z, but he did do other things. Like, I'm hearing there's nothing. There's no, there, there, there was nothing from what she's saying. And I think she'd have been able to say, oh, well, you did do this and you did do that. Or he would have gone, I did. But they didn't do none of that. So I was like, mm. 
it's it definitely giving like maybe I was just here for the experience in the show as opposed to I don't know that's that's that, that as a viewer and again I don't know him and I could be completely wrong but as a viewer that's the kind of vibe that I get like it's just I don't know I did rate his maturity on what or what seems like maturity on the show I did think you know it takes a very strong person to see all the couples that have been successful know you're on TV and you know, be accountable for the bits that you that you took that you were part in, but yeah, man, I, I just I said to my mom like she came ready with the ice queen hairdo, like she was like I've got I'm gonna let you have it all iron board and all the iron board, it killed me. I just like as if she's brought up the iron board. As my my um nan always used to say to me, yeah, no matter um anybody do anything for you, you know. But they don't do anything for you. And then, and, and the next thing, them, them, them turn around and say, you know, oh, we did, we did X, Y, Z for you, you know. Don't do that. Don't do that. Like, do them kind of things and do them with a willing heart. Do you know what I mean? Don't come and turn around and be like, well, I made, I made it. I made it. Like, I don't want to, like, don't do it then. Don't do it. And I think for her to kind of come on national TV, particularly like, you know, finances are difficult at the best of times. And I know I would not appreciate someone coming on national TV and, and, and airing out my financial business. Like, are you mad? Don't come on national TV. Like, no one sent you. No one asked you for that information. Like, but from the time you just like, yeah, I bought an iron board and I bought the groceries. And you know, now, now he has to come out and say, yeah, I didn't make the best financial decisions. And mm, So, you know, there's a bit of bitterness there. That I'm like, I don't think she was right to do that. But, you know... If you don't, if you feel like you, 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 you've been jaded, you don't own nobody nothing, do you? So, fair enough. Then we go to Bobby and Jasmine, and it's such a contrast. Like, they're so happy. They're like best friends. And she's like, you know, we, that's what I wanted. That's what I've got. You know, they speak really philosophically about, you know, about each other and and the joy and the love that they found with each other. There's lots of little, like, cut scenes and stuff about him going to his pad for the first time and have been really excited about that and their first year together and Christmases and stuff. I didn't realise that they were each other's very first dates in the pods. And from then, they were like, yes. And then Bobby's like, you know, I knew from then I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. And I put here that Jasmine gives a great answer for Bobby not being her usual type because I think Matt's like, you did say that he isn't really your usual kind of go-to. And she's like, look, I came on here to kind of rid myself of all those kind of like superfluous, very superficial layers and actually find someone that can love me in the way that I feel I deserve to be loved. And that's exactly what I've got with Bobby. Like, he makes me feel safe. He makes me feel loved. Um, so, yeah, it was a real good answer. Um, and you can tell she, she she fancies the pants of him as well. So, you know, she may not have, that may not have been her initial type of, you know, at first, but she's definitely learned to love it. Yeah, I thought it's so nice to see someone happy. Because, again, most people would be very cynical of shows like this to be like, there is no way this is going to work. And then when you see the ones that, you know, you thought were going to work and then they just don't, you know. Oh, gosh. So it's nice to see that, that in, in at least one case, love is actually blind. Like, because they're still together. They met through a war. They got decided to say yes. And a year later, this a year a year is a long time, you know, like you know that that that's quite impressive. And Emma's like, you know, social media was a big thing for you, Jasmine. Like, you know, how how has that been? And she's like, look, as much as he need, you know, he can reassure me and stuff. She's like, you know, I also need to do the work. And I don't think I have. I don't think me and my friend are always to well, her talking to me about it more so, but. We, we never hear that. We never hear people talking about doing the work because most people who have had any kind of emotion, emotional damage, any of those people that have had that, nine times out of ten will just be Tarzaning through to the next relationship and to their next car crash set of trauma. They're looking to sit down and, you know, work through why am I wired like this? Why am I triggered by things like this? They ain't interested. They're on to the next bangalang and on to the next, as I say, catastrophe so to hear someone talk about doing the work i rated that emma's like you know have you seen firecracker jasmine and bobby's like yeah he's like the thing is we've seen all sides to each other and jasmine's like you know 
the great thing is here that I don't feel judged. We don't, we don't, that's not the kind of relationship that we have. And I think that, that's a really special thing to have, isn't it? That, because I'm, I mean, I'm quite sensitive. So if someone shouts at me, I find it very, very difficult to separate. I'm just like, you, you, who you talking to? <laughs> like I, 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 I think, and you know, I, I have to learn that anger is still an emotion, right? It's still an emotion. Where how far you take that anger is is another thing. But you know, it's still an expression of an emotion, and that should be allowed in 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 some kind of way. So the fact that you know he he kind of cherishes that side of her, that firecracker side. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't know how I would deal with that because I always feel there's a way, even when you're, even when you're irritated, there's a way to still be respectful. Even if you're angry, even if you're irritated, there is still a way, even if you're being, you know, very assertive, you've been very assertive, that's fine. And making your point clear, but you, it, it, it's, the, it's the disrespectful nature for me that I can't take. And I feel like when people get too angry and they kind of lose themselves in the anger. They kind of forget themselves and forget the situation. Things, you know, people can say things. And I'm a big believer, you know, some people say, oh, it's just words. But, like, sometimes words, they will cut deeper than any kind of physical wound will. Because once you've said it, those things will then permeate around someone's head. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. But I'm happy that they are happy for each other in that regard. And then it cuts to Marissa, uh, to Jasmine's mum, and she's like, I was like, you know, you didn't, you didn't have your approval before, really. What do you think now? And she's like, he 110% has my approval. She's really happy. And they're basically working on kids and getting some mini Johnsons out, so they are good. Then it goes to Tom and Maria, and uh, Tom's explaining that basically after the... Uh, everyone was really upset and stuff and really emotional, but considering these big cultural differences and how people are raised and how he wants to raise his kids and that's whatever they decided to part ways so emma's like you know how do that make you feel and maria's like look the thing that really frustrated her is that in talking about how he wanted to raise his kids and stuff he felt she felt like he was indirectly insulting his her family, you know, the way that she was raised from her parents and stuff. She's like, at the end of the day, she's like, you know, you've been in my house, you've met my, you've met my sister, you've met me. We are, we, you know, I, I choose to raise my mom, raise my family the way my mom raised me, and that's to raise us with kindness. You know, we not to be worried about what people do for their jobs or you know what car they drive or any of that rubbish. She's like, I, I, I choose kindness, and you know, for you to kind of say that you don't want. To, your kids to be raised in the way that I was raised, you know, it's kind of an indirect insult. Tom's like, you know, he's reflected on some of um, on some of his ugly behaviour for the for the first time from him from the show. Um and that he's got, you know, Maria to thank for that in her family and, and that kind of stuff. So he seemed to be really like on the back foot and quite apologetic. My mum was like, he just she just she finds him really pompous. And and that he comes across a little bit pompous and and in this interview I kind of found that I hadn't really seen it before but I kind of found that like as he was explaining I felt like he was in some kind of boardroom meeting as he was explaining certain things um and it didn't seem as you know maybe he was just nervous you know in front of lots of people the fact that obviously he had let Maria down in that regard. Maybe he just was 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 struggling a little bit. I don't know. But Emma's like, you know, is there anything you want to say? And he's like, you know, I just wish I could have treated her better. But Emma's like, you know, when you spoke to the mum and stuff, you know, is there anything that you think about that Maria? And she's like, it just made her made her blood boil because she's just like, you know, I can't like you know how sweet my mum was with you, and and again like you kind of insult our family, you know. Then it kind of I talk, they talk about him and Tash. And it kind of shows the whole, you know, what they were like in the pods. It, it showcases what that night was like when Tash came back and, you know, what she was actually said. And what Emma did was she cleared up, like... Because I said this initially in, in, in my review. He basically said to Maria that, you know, she dropped the album and stuff. And I was like, well, te technically, she didn't say that she was in love with you she said that she had fallen in love with you when she was in the pods and either way maria was like me and tasha good 
I love Tash. Like, she, we're, we're good. And then Tom made a joke, being like, oh, you know, the tension's actually between me and, and Maria. Yeah, I I think that... I'm, I'm glad that Maria kind of said that because there's... I think it vindicates Tash a little bit because she didn't turn around to him like, I'm in love with you, don't you know? And I think he... Having been... You know, having had confused feelings for Maria, maybe, kind of just bought into that because I think it would have been easier for him to allow Tash to be the one that Maria was annoyed at than for Maria to be annoyed at him for entertaining any kind of idea or any kind of potential that she may have deemed as inappropriate that he didn't shut down. So, so it was easy to kind of be like, yeah, well, she said she loved me, so I know. Like, do you know what I mean? Um, but it seems like her and, him and Tash are cool too. And he's like, you know, we, we've been speaking over the last week, um, but, you know, she seems like she's very much got her closure and stuff. When Emma's, you know, asking, you know, how do you feel about Tom and, and so she's, and Maria is just so over it. She's like, you know, it's all right. Like, how, how are you guys? We're okay. Like, is there anything positive you can think about it, about the time you spent together? I mean, we had a laugh, you know, but it's it's really strange. It's really, really, really strange. Uh, strange, sorry. Then it cuts to Benaya and Nicole. He compliments her. Her eyes are beautiful. How she looks stunning. Like he's just. I've said this before, and I say it again. He is besotted with her, and also this time around, I can see how besotted she is with him as well. Because even though I knew she liked him. I just felt that, I don't know, again, maybe her guard was up or whatever, but you, you can tell that they, they just seem really in love and there's a lovely montage with them about their time together over the last year. And then it shows the moments straight after their first dates with each other. And it's honestly the cutest thing in the world. Like, he is so made up. Like, he's absolutely buzzing. Like, he's just like... Whoa. That was that was some serious stuff. Like, oh wow! And she's doing her little like, <laughs> it was, and it was just really funny having them watch themselves back. But they were giddy. They were giddy from that. And it makes the and they did talk about it. It makes the fact that she then chose Sam after feeling so good about that about how she felt about Benaya. It makes it even more weird knowing who she then picked, and. But then, to be fair, Benaya really takes accountability and is like, you know, I should have really stepped up sooner to let her know. And then Nicole's like, you know, to be fair, I take some responsibility in that had I been a bit more direct about what I could see with us, maybe you would have been a bit more like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, you don't need to. No, it's, it's on me. I should have I should have done more. Then it cuts to Sam. Sam enters and I'm not one to really talk about physical appearances like that because I think everyone looked really nice. But I will say, I was not a fan of this guy's hair. So, I mean, again, someone might like, hate my hair, my high top hair, or whatever, and that's fine. But my opinion was just, like, I just didn't understand what was going on with the party, and I just I, I, I don't understand I don't understand any part of that. Um, and it probably doesn't help that I don't really rate him. again. I don't know him as a person, so I'm only I'm only rating the character that's been shown from what I've seen from the, the snippets that I've seen I have seen since b before watching this as well though that he that Sam's on TikTok and I've noticed that like he's kind of I don't know cashing in but he's definitely uh, you know it, 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 you know kind of someone who can kind of laugh at themselves um, but I don't know whether it's someone I can't, I can't tell at the moment because there's not that, there's not that much on there but from what I've seen so far but he's you know, making jokes about the whole, you know, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. Hey, hey, I think I love you. So he so he, he already knows, I guess, what some people have, have kind of held against him from the public. And I guess he's kind of turning that around now to, like, I'm just going to own it. So in one way, if it's just a genuine that, I'm like, rate it. If it is just kind of, like, cheeky girls having, like, my tagline, one of them, okay, whatever. But anyway... He comes in and he does say that the last few weeks of his life have been really hard. Like he said, he went in the show genuinely looking to find love, genuinely looking, looking to find a wife. And he didn't find that, but 
in terms of what he has found is that I guess the response from the public has been quite vociferous and he's found out that actually he's got you know some tough skin and it's actually made him stronger they do pick up on some of the things he said and they're like you know Matt's like you know you made comments about you know finding it difficult to pick Nicole up and stuff and, and the whole time they're talking about this Nicole looks like she's fuming like she looks really really annoyed and he's like, look, you know, sometimes you say things, he's like, I'm not a perfect human. Like, you say something because you're nervous and, you know, you get some things that come out wrong. He's like, you know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have meant any offence to her at all. And Nicole's just like, thank you, Benaya. Like, thank you so much for just for having my back in the way that you did from the get-go, even basically when I didn't even know. And it means the world to me that you would have so much love and support for me. It's just a really nice moment between the two of them. They do look really good together, by the way. And then they ask Sam again about the think I love you. Like, what was that about? Like, what, I think I love you. And he's like, look, you know, I didn't want to say that I'd fallen in love. And I think what I meant to say was that I was falling in love, which I think is a, a, an, an absolutely okay thing to be at that moment in time. And then, you know, when we saw each other, it was obviously quite awkward. So, you know, I didn't feel comfortable saying right there and then that I love you. But here's the thing. Who told you to say anything? It's almost like you felt like you had to have some moment, like, to solidify this moment. And you felt that telling someone that you think that you love them would be sufficient. Like, like stopped her. Stopped her. And was like, eh. I think I love you. It's just, I I don't know. I I I get the whole, and I said this at the time. Look, look, it's absolutely fine for you to to not be quite sure of what your feelings are, but then you just don't say nothing, dear. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I I, I maybe that's just me. Then like right, we need to get to the bottom of this. Who actually called off the engagement? And Nicole's like, look. After I spoke to Benaya and Benaya told me what you know what his concerns were and stuff, and I, she's like I I I just you know I I trusted Benaya and I I really be, you know believe what he said, um she's like you know I'm I said to Sam I'm, I'm not comfortable going to Greece I'm not comfortable doing any further part of the process with you in that regard, which she then said that Sam got really upset about um and it didn't and didn't you know didn't take it well. The next question was, why, when they had the link up, did Sam tell Benaya that Nicole wanted to sleep with him? Like, why would you do that? And Sam's like, look, you know, I really regret that happening. I really, you know, I got there and there seemed to be a lot of animosity. And, you know, I, um, you know, I really regret that that happened. And then out, like, an absolute, like, just bullet Demi just like, Sam... Just say sorry to Nicole for the love of God. Say sorry to Nicole. Like, what? And it's like, ah, uh, you know. And, and Nicole's like, look, look, in the day, it was hurtful, what you said. And it was a lie. And he's like, you know, yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry for that. So it wasn't even true. And if you remember, at the time, I was very much like... Why did she not? Why did she not defend herself? Not to say she needs to have stand up there and have no big, big argument with nobody. Because if I've already decided that you are not worth my time, I'm not arguing with not a not a word. And maybe she told the people that she needed to tell, like Benaya. But I still, if I know this is getting aired and you're gonna label me as some kind of like thirsty Jezebel. Mate, I'm telling you now, like, that did not happen. You and whatever's going on the top of that, that you can go swivel on someone's big toe, like, what are you talking about? But she didn't do that, and it made me doubt her. But you could see how much it clearly had hurt her and the fact that he lied about it. So this is the thing, like... And, you know, Emma did say, look, you know, I thank, I thank you, Sam, for coming on. It couldn't have been easy, knowing the backlash that you've had. Um, and the thing is, you know, we all get caught up in the fact that this is entertainment for us, it's a show, but there are actually real people that are attached to this, and I just hope that, you know, people, you know, can heal and move on and stuff, but my thing is, right, is this, okay, so perfect example, like, I've got a YouTube channel, I already know that when I'm talking, I am putting myself in front of 
whoever's deciding to watch this video at any point, right? I'm talking. So I'm, I'm automatically stepping into the furore of doing something publicly, which means that the, it can go one way or the other. There, someone could hate me, someone could rape me, someone could like, you know, that that, that is just, it, surely it's something that you, you, you take on board particularly when you're doing a television show that is probably going to be streamed to however many homes, not just in the UK, but a, but internationally as well. Why would you set out to do anything that's disingenuous? Like, you know, it's different if you can't help it. Like, if you're just a natural douche, I'm not saying he is, I'm just saying as a universal, if you are a natural douche, you can't do anything to undouche yourself, do you know what I mean, because the cameras won't lie. But... You see, with this, you deliberately told something that wasn't true. And then, you know, I like, oh my God, it's been terrible that people don't rate me. Like, why are people going to rate that? Why are people going to rate that behaviour? Like, they're not going to, are they? You've, you've allowed an innocent woman to have this awful, like, slander over her head. And it's taken until the reunion, like, for you to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry. I don't know. I just... I don't rate it. I don't rate it. And I actually saw as well that um, on his TikTok that Kat was on his, his TikTok. So I was like, oh, is that like a thing now? Or I don't know. But, uh, or it could just be playing up to the cameras as well. But yeah, he wished everyone the best and then went to go sit in the audience. Then it cuts to Freddie and Kat. They're not together. Um, and I think they it, it felt like it was 50-50. I think at the time that she was really upset about it and stuff. But I think... You know, he's like, look, we did, we did have issues. There were things that I wasn't happy with. You know, I got on her nerves a bit as well. It's kind of fifty fifty. She's like, you know, I did have a laugh though. She's like, I did, I did, we did, we did laugh a lot. But he's like, you know, we, our lifestyles were different. She, she, he felt that she snapped at him a lot, and that he just couldn't be himself. I don't know if, like, if like a big deal has been made about Kat saying, you know, once to cheat, always to cheat. And the thing is, yeah. If you've been cheated on, I think you have absolutely every single right in the world to be like, I just don't want any part of someone that's cheated. Like, you know, I've said to you before, I've been in that camp, I've been cheated on, and whilst I wouldn't hold it against someone after seven or eight years, which she said she didn't as well, that she wouldn't do that, I still think it's within, if that's one of my values, that's perfectly fine, because I've been burnt by someone that's done that, which means there is a level of trust which it's just super high in that regard and if you don't quite meet that or match that it's my prerogative to say nah so i don't think i i i, I didn't necessarily penalize her for being like you know want to cheat or to cheat because you, you you the the glow from your angel halo has been dimmed somewhat because i found out that you cheated but what it's then for you to do is for me is to help me forget that so to know that's something that you did do, but it's something that you've learnt from. And the way that I know that you've learnt from that is because everything you've done since that point points to a person that doesn't do that. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't think it's I don't think it's her it's not it's not her fault. She didn't make him cheat, whether it was ten years ago, twenty years ago, like whatever. Like, you know, you still did that at some point. So I didn't hold that against her. But I held everything else against her though. Like being a bit cantankerous with the with the snapping um, bit, seeming a little bit materialistic in certain regards and and stuff um, from again what we saw from the show I'm not saying she is I don't know her but from what we saw from the show there's elements that I was like I don't really uh, I just didn't yeah I didn't really didn't really vibe with her I love the fact that they asked about the earrings as well and and was like you know well, why would you buy the earrings if you knew you weren't going to marry her. And he was like, yeah, but if I, if I didn't get the gift, I knew that would be seen as quite bad. And I also knew if I did get the gift, that would also be seen quite bad. So I couldn't really win either way. So I was like, okay. They asked his sister, his sister, Betty, is it? Uh, whether or not she still agreed that with the advice that she gave to Freddie. And she's like, yep, 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 100%. Like, I think it's absolutely spot on advice. And actually it was funny, Kat completely agrees with her as well. And they're like, look, we're probably going to stay friends. And actually that, you know, we, we work better as friends. And Kat gets quite a little bit emotional because she's like, you know, I've learned so much about myself and you guys have made me so much better. Freddie's made me so much better. The girls have made me so much better. Danny, um, Nicole, like 
you've, you've all made me better. And that did seem genuine. And, and if I'm honest, I have put here, Cat comes off so much better. And I think that's the thing for me. If someone can kind of go on a show like this and, and reflect on how certain behaviours can can come across, I think it's it's kind of the best outcome, isn't it? Because again, anyone, it'd be really easy and it's easy, easy for us to sit down here and just review, react, judge and stuff. Um, but that's what the show's about. So that's, that, that's what I'm going to do. But it'd be really easy for any one of us to be in that position and potentially have similar things that we're not even aware of until we see it on camera that wow is that how i come across in a day-to-day like jesus so you know i can understand that there's a lot of self-growth to be had as well and it's really awesome that she's embraced that so she's definitely someone that's turned it around for me because like i said i wasn't a fan like at all but from that i was like okay all right but yeah man i think as i said it was juicy um you know the whole sam situation like I, I really hope he doesn't become one of them serial reality TV series, and we, you know we see him pop up on other things and stuff. Because I just, yeah, there's nothing. I'm just, I'm just not about it. Um, I think the 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 juiciest one for me was definitely Sabrina and Stephen. And I say it's juicy, not in a sadistic way, like I didn't. Oh my god, we love Turmoil and Breaker, but just in how much went on there because I wasn't expecting like especially from them two I was not expecting that at all and yeah I love the kind of demi growth and the fact that she's just like yo I'm a, I'm a, I'm 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 an independent woman where you at come on I'm an independent woman where you at come on like she's just she's just in her own bag like I mean I, and I love that for her but yeah I think the 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 happiest things obviously are when you just see that love works and Nicole and Benai look really happy. You know, we've got travel plans to go, and and then you got Jazz, Jasmine, and Bobby who are planning little mini Johnson. So, I think if you had to set, like, you know, there are, there's a about on the balance of however many couples there are, in terms of the ones that are still together. Obviously, there's only two out of the five that that are together. However, the fact that you could find anybody. To genuinely fall in love with someone behind the wall, for them to date each other, be together, move in together, meet each other's family, get to an actual wedding, a, ve- a, wed- a wedding venue altar to be like, I'm going to give these vows, do you take this person, this love is blind. For that to have happened three times and for at least two of those relationships a year later to still be going strong. Like, is that not a sign that love is blind? One person working, one set of couple working, that to me is a big sign. So, yeah. There's hope for us all, people. There's hope for us all. But yeah, I'd love to know what you guys thought of this. What did you make of the reunion? Um, did, what did you think of the Sabrina and Stephen confrontation? Do you th- do you, did you have a, a, a theory one way? Um, what did you make of Sam's appearance? What did you think of his apology? Uh, what did you make of the interaction between Ollie and Demi and Charlotte? And and what do you think about there being a, a season two? Because I, I feel like... I don't know whether the English one is just a little less dramatic, I guess. Which is fine, because we, you know, it is what it is. But I don't know. Like, I think Married at First Sight, I've definitely enjoyed that more i feel like it's been on for longer number one but i feel like i've enjoyed <sighs> i say enjoyed that's weird because obviously we've married at first sight a lot of their storylines now um they, i don't know how i don't know how transparent they actually are how, how organic they are because how can it be that every single season that someone cheats on their husband or their wife with another husband and wife in the competition like that's that's weird but it does just seem to be a little bit like like juicy and it is on for longer so I know that um Emma was like to Matt do you want to do this again next season or, or or next year and he's like yeah I do I think by the way in terms of a duo of hosting I think she's amazing I think she's always going to be amazing and I think he's good I think I'd like to just have seen more of him and him asking more questions just being more I don't know but again, it's his first one. So, you know, maybe now that he's got the first one under his belt, the next one will be even more like, 
engaged and involved and that kind of stuff. But um, no, nah, I enjoyed it. I, I, I enjoyed watching it. And actually, it's quite cool that it's just 12 episodes because I'm going to be in out onto the next. So, yeah, let me know what you guys' thoughts were. If you did enjoy this, then do drop me a like and subscribe. That'd be amazing. Thank you very much. And if you do want access to my full reactions and other videos like this as well, then please do head over to my Patreon, uh, which is an awesome way to help support the channel. And it's a great way to connect with me more. So, what's not to love? <laughs> but for now, thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you on the next one. <laughs>